Hi, I'm Annie. My passion has always been the hospitality and entertainment industry. The industry is full of flavor and just bursting with opportunities. I've always been fascinated by the idea of entrepreneurship, but I don't think most people even realize how much work it takes to be a successful entrepreneur. Overall, a word is just a word, and what a person does is more meaningful. In this show, we'll discover the most important entrepreneurial key success factors. Today's guest is Mr. William Ng. He's the founder of the role formerly known as the Asian Heritage Show, the man with the passion and the skills and the vision to deliver. Welcome, William. It's a pleasure to have you on the program today. Anyway, this is just a little gift from us. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. What's your story? Well, the story of Roe goes back uh, 20 years ago mm-hmm. when I first moved to the office here. Mm-hmm. And I saw the opportunity to, to redevelop the a row of uh, dilapidated shop houses that were built in the 1940s before the Japanese War. Mm-hmm. So I found out who the owners were and, uh, and I contacted them mm-hmm. and uh, start leasing the first few properties uh, in, in, in this row. So uh, we uh, brought in a number of tenants, mm-hmm. lifestyle tenants uh, from Singapore as well as local mm-hmm. and uh, turned it into a uh, lifestyle, trendy, kind of like Dining, dining uh, place where people can come and uh, eat, drink, relax, and yeah, party. I remember the hit that time was Bar Saban back in yes. 2002, right? That's right. Mm-hmm. So Bar Saban was a hit. Uh, many people in, from KL will remember it, mm-hmm. and and that was followed by loft and uh, wine room and many others mm-hmm. in the row. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it was a very happening place back then. Mm-hmm. So what happened to this row? Well, the uh, those that uh, remember the role, it was uh, it was good while it lasted. Mm-hmm. Uh, although I think we reached our, reached our peak in the uh, year two thousand and seven, two thousand and eight, where this is the place mm-hmm. uh, to hang out. This is the place to, to see and be seen, mm-hmm. uh, and to eat, to drink, and to party. Mm-hmm. But uh, all good things must come to an end. And uh, after the the initial euphoria of the whole area, then. It became to, to take a, a, a twist when more uh, alternative uh, entertainment locations open up, mm-hmm. like in Changkat, like in, in the suburbs and so on, mm-hmm. and the complex and so and so on. So, so eventually, it uh, it, it went a bit uh, downhill, mm-hmm. and uh, the by 2012, it was no longer the place to go, uh, and it was replaced by some uh, kind of like dodgy bars, people mm-hmm. would call it. So that was um, a 12-year cycle from, from the time where it was a hit mm-hmm. to the time it, it went down. But you had a good 10-year run in total, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. a, a good 10-year run. Uh, but at the end of the, um, some will say the demise of the role mm-hmm. where it's no longer happening. Uh, and another opportunity came about. Uh, previously, I was renting the property. Mm-hmm. Now, the opportunity came out when the owners decided to uh, sell the, the entire property. stretch mm-hmm. oh, okay. and they offered me the first right of refusal mm-hmm. to uh, purchase those properties. Mm-hmm. So sometimes uh, a calamity or a bad thing that happens can turn out to be an opportunity. A blessing in disguise. You know? Yeah, an opportunity for mm-hmm. you to then perhaps move into a different mm-hmm different uh, uh, a business model. Mm-hmm. The, the previous business model was to rent and, and take advantage of the rental arbitrage mm-hmm. and you sublet to somebody. Now, um, it's opportunity to become a landowner, mm-hmm. uh, which is uh, what uh, me and my partners did uh, back in 2012. Mm-hmm. Okay, but uh, from 2012, this place was vacant. Mm. Till, uh, how many years ago did you revamp this place? This place was, um, completed our first phase, the first 12 units mm-hmm. in uh, three years ago, mm-hmm. 2017. Mm-hmm. So it, it took us uh, five years between the time we acquired it in uh, end of 2012 mm-hmm. to completion. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that five years was basically uh, waiting for the tenants to complete their lease, mm-hmm. uh, submitting the building plans and approvals uh, to DBKL, okay. and then uh, the construction period. Yep. And in between there was a fire as well that happened in one of the vacant yeah, units. Correct, it came out in the paper. I know. Mm. Mm-hmm. Okay, so 
Okay, but other than that, uh, your first phase has been completed. What about the second phase? The second phase, uh, we've just physically uh, completed the building. Mm -hmm. But it's still uh, empty. It is still empty. Unfortunately, we have completed in, in uh, not a very good time with the okay, MCO with the and MCO, all that. Mm -hmm. So not only us, but uh, uh, throughout the KL, mm -hmm. a lot of landlords are now mm -hmm. uh, figuring out how to release a lot of empty commercial property. Mm -hmm. But we are fairly confident that we will find mm -hmm. uh, tenants because we are a unique uh, proposition. We are not a shopping mall. Mm -hmm. Uh, we are one development, a row of shop, low-rise shop houses in mm -hmm. the middle of the city. Mm -hmm. So we believe that that uh, we can we can curate yeah, this is the right tenant location. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So we, we don't have a lot of space. Uh, so we only need like ten good tenants. Mm -hmm. so, parking is an issue here. Would it uh, be? No, parking is no longer an issue because mm -hmm. at the back of uh, the row there mm -hmm. is uh, five acres of parking where you have open air parking for at least two to three hundred cars. Mm -hmm. Not to mention um, the other parking. Uh, found uh, found, the found road, in yeah. the buildings mm -hmm. like Sheraton or yeah, and the mall along. across the road as well, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. a mall, the mall quill has got uh, over a thousand parking. That's very good. That's very yeah. good. Okay, but uh, any any exciting uh, tenants around this area at the moment? Well, we are trying to move away from entertainment uh, bars and clubs. So, mm -hmm. if you talk about exciting in terms of entertainment, mm -hmm. uh, we are not going there. Mm -hmm. But we are, we are looking more of a sustainable uh, tenant mix. Mm -hmm. Where, where it will it will not last five years, ten years, it will last mm -hmm. uh, okay. like kind of evergreen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So what are you looking forward to? Well, I'm looking forward to um, the end of the MCO, mm -hmm. so everybody can yeah. go back to their normal lives. Yeah, I'm sure everyone is looking forward yeah. to that. I'm also looking forward to completing the second block. Mm -hmm. We are almost almost uh, done, mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. doing some finishing touches, doing some ID mm -hmm. and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, we have already, uh, the, this first block, north block, we have already 100% leased out, mm -hmm. um, okay. despite the Poor economic environment. Mm -hmm. The second block we is half taken. Mm -hmm. but so you got potential tenants for the second We already have uh, some tenants, in fact already started renovation. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. And we have some plans to uh, to to refurbish the rest of the units mm -hmm. with an uh, interesting mix of tenants. Mm -hmm. So uh, hopefully by the end of the year, end of this year we can have the whole whole block uh, running. Okay, so it's no longer entertainment kind of thing, but the, what what do you intend? Do. Yeah. What, what kind of tenants do you want? The, the tenants that we, we are attracting are um, again cafes and mm -hmm. some uh, restaurants mm -hmm. to cater for the office crowd. There's a big office crowd okay. uh, in this area. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll move away from uh, entertainment mm -hmm. and put in some specialist retail, uh, mm -hmm. such as a bicycle shop, mm -hmm. uh, which we, we have signed up already. Mm -hmm. We'll put in some nice uh, food concepts like a, a vegan restaurant, a pizza mm -hmm. outlets. So they are already all in the pipeline. Correct. With that said, any younger, I, I believe the younger generation wouldn't have heard of uh, Asia, Asian Heritage Show. Mm. Those were back in 2002. So anyone below the age of 40, if you tell them Asian Heritage Show or the road, they wouldn't have known about it. So mm. how, how do you intend to, to bring up the name, the road, which you have already, you know, after mm. you revamp the place, you change it to the road? Yep. So the, uh, actually, it's good that they don't have uh, too much memory of this place yeah. because I mentioned uh, mm. before that uh, mm. towards uh, the end of uh, 20, 2010, mm. 2012, mm. the whole place got uh, a bit run down. Mm. Mm. Uh, so, but uh, the, the idea is, you know, this area, there are new hotels, mm. there are good, nice concepts uh, nearby here mm. on the adjacent streets such as uh, Joloko, mm -hmm. such as Taper Street, which mm -hmm. a lot of young people go. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a very nice uh, hotel, boutique hotel stripes. Mm -hmm. So we believe now this is this Chow Kit area mm -hmm. is uh, the coming place mm -hmm. uh, in KL right now, mm -hmm. together with uh, Pataling Street. Right, but without the entertainment, how do you intend to attract the more mm. people? Uh, we do have one entertainment uh, outlet uh, planned mm -hmm. uh, on the first floor mm -hmm. uh, that is still a bit confidential. Mm -hmm. okay. We have not yet uh, started, you but there will be there will be one or two. Mm -hmm. But 
the focus I mentioned is not on entertainment, mm -hmm. it's more on a more of a mix uh, mm -hmm. development. Mm -hmm. And young people nowadays, anyway, they don't go clubbing, they don't go out and order bottles and drink. Mm -hmm. They hang out more in uh, cafes, mm -hmm. they hang out more in places where they can uh, you know, take pictures and, uh, and uh, yeah, it's all about social media, social media yeah. postings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any any upcoming or any plans that you intend to put in for to attract the younger crowds? Because with I believe with social media posting, it's going to help a lot with the, uh, with the promoting the role. Mm. You know, any any ideas, any potential anchor tenants that you you would like to bring into the role? What what the young people like is evolving. Mm. So what they like today may not be what they like next year yeah, or, yeah. Or, or six months on the road. Mm -hmm. But we do need to engage them. Mm -hmm. uh, the younger people do want to be engaged. Mm -hmm. They do want to be part of the narrative mm -hmm. as in, in the new KL mm -hmm. where they want to hang out. Mm -hmm. the young people want to make a difference. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, young people, the millennials, mm -hmm. um, once you have a sense of identity of who mm -hmm. they are. Mm -hmm. So we need to create products and we need to have tenants to be able to identify mm -hmm. with the, the younger people's uh, narrative and the view, mm -hmm. uh, worldview. Mm -hmm. uh, and to do that, uh, we need to use, uh, employ a lot of social media. Mm -hmm. And now with the MCO going on, mm -hmm. um, people also are moving away from dine-in mm -hmm. to takeouts, to uh, ordering online. Mm -hmm. So there's something also where this area can be what they call a black kitchen mm -hmm. whereby you don't necessarily need to have a hundred people here mm -hmm. but you have a very effective uh, uh, delivery order system mm -hmm. to cater for people living in the Ampang area, mm -hmm. in the Sono area and the, mm -hmm. the city centre. Mm -hmm. this, this area is much cheaper for you to have this kitchen, black kitchen rather than you locate in a yeah, in the city centre mm -hmm. uh, shopping mall where mm -hmm. your rentals is, will be a lot higher. Mm -hmm. And how has the pandemic affected your plans or affected you at all? I think the pandemic has affected everyone. Mm -hmm. I think no one is bad. From landlords, we are having troubles with our tenants asking for discounts and mm -hmm. we do give them discounts. Mm -hmm. For tenants, they have trouble with traffic mm -hmm. whereby their business dropped as much as 80%. Mm -hmm. And for the office crowd and the people who, who are in this area, who frequent this area, mm -hmm. they, some of them lost their jobs and, uh, and uh, reduced income. So it is not easy for, for anyone. So mm -hmm. we feel sorry for everyone, including mm -hmm. ourselves. Mm -hmm. But we, in, in any property play, this is a long-term mm -hmm. long uh, proposition. Mm -hmm. uh, we hope a vaccine can be found soon. Uh, the government has done a great job in uh, containing oh, yeah. Uh, the spread. Uh, we hope people uh, can come part, back, yeah. do their part, mm -hmm. uh, be responsible, and and uh, come back and support the economy. So what we're what we're doing actually is good for the economy, providing jobs, providing a place for people mm -hmm. to to hang out, mm -hmm. to eat, to drink. Uh, you can't just be locked up <laughs> in, uh, in in an apartment yeah, twenty four seven. True. You mm -hmm. need somewhere to go. Mm -hmm. And and what we have created is very unique. Mm -hmm. uh, if you were to take some pictures of the front of the row right mm -hmm. now. Uh, you won't feel as though you are in KL. Mm -hmm. you, some people have said it feels like Melbourne. Mm -hmm. It feels true, like true, true. Uh, Sydney. It changed since 2002. Yeah, yeah. That's right. changed a lot. Since you remembered, it looks very yeah. much different. And, and because we we own the whole road, mm -hmm. it is easy for us to curate mm -hmm. to have a kind of like a standard common look. Uh, you mm -hmm. can't find that anywhere else uh, in KL because yeah. your next door neighbour will mm -hmm. do something. Of do build a five-story building, the next door near neighbor mm. will be dilapidated mm. and leave it unrented. Yeah, yeah. Then you have a problem. Mm. Uh, here we, we do it uh, as a uh, coherent development. Mm. And I heard you're very much into the outdoor activities. Yeah, uh, all work and no play is no fun. <laughs> uh, and I, I do enjoy the outdoors, mm -hmm. um, especially mountain climbing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, You've climbed Mount Kinabalu? Yeah, I've climbed my, Mount Kinabalu three times. Three times? And Mount Fuji twice. Wow. Uh, my furthest climb was in uh, Peru when I went to Machu Picchu. Ah, okay. That was a five day hike. Five day at, hike? Uh, 4,000 4, meters elevation up and down uh, the hills. Which that's the uh, most beautiful. Mm -hmm. Climb. So I've done mm -hmm. also some climbs in Australia, ah, in okay. Tasmania, and so on. Mm -hmm. Okay, but uh, which one is you, know, you like it most? Swimming or yeah. mountain climbing? 
but I, I do enjoy the freedom in swimming as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I do open water uh, swims, ocean men, they call it. Uh, usually it's about 6 km. So I've, I've competed in more than 10 races. Uh, and I use that as an opportunity to uh, travel. Mm -hmm. So some of the swims I've done was uh, in uh, Turkey, mm -hmm. uh, Istanbul. There's a, there is an intercontinental swim. Mm -hmm. We swim from, from the uh, Asian side to the European side, uh, over 6.5 km. Where then, do you get the stamina from? Do you train every day? Yeah, I do train like uh, at least, uh, now I can't, but uh, usually I swim 30 kilometers uh, a month. Yeah, with the MCO, you, yeah. you can't swim yet. So uh, other places I swim is mostly Europe, mm. Greece, Cyprus, Italy, mm. uh, so, Spain. So in total, how many how many seas have you swim? I I've lost count. <laughs> uh, I've swum to Pacific. I was in uh, Hawaii for the wow. uh, rough water swim mm. last year. Mm. I swam in in uh, Asian Sea, in uh, Mediterranean, uh, the Atlantic. Uh, quite a number. <laughs> so how how long is the swim? Yes, it's, uh, the 5 to 6 km swim usually takes me about 1 hour uh, 45 minutes. It's incredible, really. Yeah, so uh, based on my age group, uh, mm. you know, once, once in a while I do uh, end up in the podium. <laughs> but, uh, so, um, how many times have you stand on the podium? Uh, at least three times, yes. Wow, that's really good. That's really <laughs> good. My other interests are uh, squash. I play a lot of squash. Ah, okay. Uh, that's why I can see that you're very fit. I play a lot of squash. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, and, and now that uh, squash swimming is not allowed, I'm taking up cycling. Ah, yeah, around the hills mm -hmm, in the mm -hmm. Tamanduta area. So, how far do you do, you do every day? Uh, well, I just started. So, uh -huh. and uh, cycling is a very dangerous sport. You can mm -hmm. easily, the day I fell down and uh, you look at me, oh, I, I, I got a kind of a scratch. <laughs> And uh, lucky didn't get injured, yeah. But do you cycle in groups or you do it alone? At the moment, I, I, I kind of do it alone, yeah. Alone? That's, that's really dangerous if you do it alone. Yeah, it is. Why don't you get a buddy to do it with you? Yeah, I'm, I'm looking for one. Yeah. <laughs>there are many opportunities uh, out there, mm. especially for young people. Mm. Uh, right now, there is, the world is changing very rapidly mm. as a result of uh, IT, internet, mm. social media, mm. uh, globalization. Okay. It's now, we're talking about this global village where, where you can access a lot of information mm. and see what other people are doing. So you, you must find where is the opportunity, where is the need mm. that is not met in your community, whether it is certain app that you can develop or certain businesses you can do. Mm. And when you find that uh, the need or the opportunity which is unmet, uh, then you must act on it. Mm. So in, in my case, I act on it when I saw these buildings were empty and dilapidated. Mm. I thought I could curate something out of it. Mm. Um, but when you start to begin to formalize your ideas and business ideas and business plans, uh, and even start talking to people, potential investors, there will be many people who will say negative things mm -hmm. why you shouldn't be doing it mm -hmm. and that's when you have to a lot of people get scared off mm -hmm. and their original uh, plans and dreams kind of like die off at that stage mm -hmm. uh, what you call a stillborn mm -hmm. even before it comes to fruition at the idea stage it's already killed but my advice is uh, continue mm -hmm. with your idea uh, speak to people mm -hmm. if it makes sense uh, if you can mitigate the risk, um, and you, you, can, you, you should you should uh, you should Before, go ahead. Yeah, you should, ahead. should go ahead. Mm -hmm. But be prepared for a lot of work, a lot of hard work, a lot of challenges. Yeah, it's not going to be easy. Uh, there mm -hmm. will be problems. Uh, the main problems will come from people, mm -hmm. people you work with, whether it's customers, suppliers, or even employees. Mm -hmm. uh, problems with authorities. If you need their licenses, their approvals, mm -hmm. and, as we know, uh, it can be quite bureaucratic. Uh, when we deal with uh, governments and so on. Mm. So all these hurdles will, will come into play. Uh, and try not, try not to get into businesses that require a lot of uh, upfront capital. Right now you can do many things uh, without too much capital. Mm -hmm. uh, because if, if you do that, then if uh, something bad happens, then you may not be able to recover. Mm. So there's, uh, there's always needs and opportunities out there which you could yeah. capitalize. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks for joining us today, William. My pleasure. Thank you for inviting me.
next episode, we have a very special guest. Bright and attractive and among other things, a very talented, strong-minded woman who came to define independent strength and determination. And she is Dr. Su Win Si. The show to survive here. <laughs> Yeah. The industry is very challenging. True, true. I, yeah. And I told them that entertainment, if you want to come in just for fame, mm -hmm. please don't come in. Okay. It's going to be very tough. It's a very good advice. Yeah. It's going to be very tough mm -hmm. and I would tell them all the realities. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's take one euro. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether do I have the budget for my fame. My renter also, I'm almost like, you know, being chased out already. I was being nicknamed as Godzilla because I was the, I was the biggest girl in the class. I cannot imagine. <laughs> now, as we mentioned, we are going into a world of now it's KOL, key opinion leader. Mm -hmm. So they are just opinion. Mm -hmm. But in order to justify a deeper way, we are trying to reinvent into KOE, mm -hmm. key opinion educator.